Welcome to My First Boat. In this channel, we will show you the step-by-step -step restoration of our 40-foot vintage steel yacht, with the goal to someday living on it full-time. We'll start this week with a seemingly insignificant task, which is to make the salon a little more cozy by getting all that junk out of there. And mind you, this is only the really useful stuff. Everything else I've already thrown away. Luckily, we still have some free space on the front and aft outside decks. And what a difference it makes. Now I have a nice spot to watch YouTube videos during my lunch breaks. I also removed some of the old heating pipes from the engine room. And don't worry, we'll get to some more interesting tasks in just a moment. So some of you have asked how I managed to stay warm in here because as you know, we are right in the middle of winter and it's actually negative 10 at the moment outside. Well, very simple. We have our little Chinese diesel heater here, which I've set up in a very makeshift way for the time being. With it, we can heat each room of the boat individually. So right now it's heating the forward cabin. And if you want to change it to heating the salon, we just push a button. And there you go. Or if you want to heat the aft cabin, you press the button again and this is how you do it. And this is where the air comes out, nice and warm. Okay, so today I'm going to remove the windows and start working on those nasty rusty areas. So because these seals have been in there for probably as old as the boat is, so over 40 years, they are a bit hard and very difficult to remove so we found while working on the windows in the aft cabin that the best way to do that is with the help of a cutting tool so let's do that now Next, I measure and cut out the rusty areas to weld in new steel plates later on. And so I repeat this process for all the windows that need treatment. And just look at how badly this one was affected. And here again, a first little round of grinding to reveal all the rusty areas. And then I measure and trace the lines for cutting. And by the way, for cutting I use these one millimeter thick cutting discs. And here's the third and last window that needed to be worked on. To my surprise, this one is actually made of plastic. I better cut away these wooden parts, which are too close to the areas where I'm gonna weld later on. 
so they don't catch on fire. I grind away a border of about 2 to 3 centimeters on the edges of the window frames. For one, so that I can see what other areas there might be rust on. And also so that the paint doesn't catch on fire during the welding. And to create a nice smooth area when we do the painting later on. Now that all the bad metal areas have been cut away, it's time to cut and fit the new steel plates. We got a new MIG welder. And a new fire extinguisher. To get a feeling for this device and to find the best settings, I'm going to do some tests first. The video here starts at the moment when I got the right wire speed and current setting kinda figured out. Hmm. Let's keep trying. After a while of testing and fine-tuning the current and wire speed, this was the last and frankly best of my welds on that day. I know it's not great, but at least I managed to get a continued weld. So now let's move on to the real thing. First a few point welds to make the new steel stick in place. Somehow I ended up with a pretty big gap on this piece, but I found that it's not a problem at all for this MIG welder to bridge even larger gaps. Next I fill in the gaps on the inside and on the outside. And I'll be very honest with you. What you see right here is the best of all the welds that I did with the new MIG welder working on the windows of the forward cabin here. And I know that for my own sake I shouldn't do this, but I'm still gonna show you the result after I grinded away my shitty welds. And the darker areas that seem like gaps on the left and right of the weld are actually just areas that are deeper than the material surrounding it so that the angle grinder couldn't reach it. But it seems that the metal is in fact properly bonded together, at least for the most part. So to conclude, after my first couple of days of working with a MIG welder, I find it much easier than a stick welder, mainly because the distance between where you hold the handle of the welder and the steel where you weld on doesn't change all the time like with a stick welder so it's much easier to develop the proper movements to get nice welds. But still with that, it does require a lot of practice and the little welding work I have here is by far not sufficient to get that experience. Nevertheless, I got the job done and I'm pretty happy with the result.
And this is what the window frames look like with the new steel welded in. With that I'm signing off and I hope to see you again for the next video. And let's cross our fingers and hope that we get warmer temperatures in the coming days and weeks.